So first one is about starting with the right site. Yeah, this is like super important. So, I mean, I, I know you've talked about it many times in videos and such. If you're growing food, most types of vegetables need lots of light. And that is really eight or more hours every single day. Um, and with less light, there's still some crops you can grow. You know, you can still grow things like leaf lettuce and spinach and parsley and beets and a lot of leafy things will still grow in less light. But if you want the peppers, the cucumbers, the zucchini, the tomatoes, you need lots of sunshine. And this applies to, you know, container gardening as well. So if you've got a shady balcony, don't try to grow tomatoes, you know, try to grow leafy vegetables, you know, grow what is going to do well in your site. Um, but if you can pick where you put your containers, put them in full sun, uh, it's really quite essential. I mean, ideally to an area with not too much wind, um, you know, and, and so things to think about, uh, you know, also somewhere where you can access water, right? So, you know, sun is important, but also watering, especially in containers is going to be key. So putting your containers where they can uh, use a hose nearby, or you don't have to haul a watering can a couple hundred yards to get there. So those are things I would think about when I'm thinking, where am I going to put these containers? Um, so yeah, sunshine, the number one, I think, defining point of success when growing food is plenty of light. Yeah, I think then, uh, you know, this is something I, I tend to rant about how people, they tend to view the positioning of their garden the way they would view decorating a living room, right? Mm. You know, and, and thinking of the plants or the pots as, as, as accessories and decorations and putting them where they think they'll have the best visual effect yeah. when in fact it's the exact opposite. I might, there might be only one place you can grow certain plants on your deck because it gets the best sun. Mm -hmm. And I was going to ask you, what if someone, let's think about someone who's got an apartment and they're on a deck, but I never have to think this way, uh, but I, I don't know about you, but I spent years living in apartments. Mm -hmm. um, so let's say they're, they have a deck and it's got the sun, but it's very windy. Do you, can you think yeah. of anything, someone like, you, let's say I want to grow a, a plant that, that is going to get beat, like some plants will get the, 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 like a basil will get beaten to pieces by wind. Totally. And it's pepper, and here, at least here in Nova Scotia, it can be hard to get peppers to grow because the air around the pepper isn't warm enough because they like so much heat with wind. Is there anything, aside from just choosing things that can take wind, um, yeah. uh, is there anything? Yeah, you put wind breaks, of wind course, breaks. you know, yes. you know, I mean, there's lots of different kinds of wind breaks you can get to attach to, um, uh, you know, the balcony, the railings, things like that, of course. Um, so, you know, sometimes they're more fabric based, um, sometimes they're more plastic. So different types of wind breaks would probably help a lot in that situation. Just make sure you're not choosing ones that are going to block light, <laughs> you yeah. know, so clear plastic might be better, or even, um, you know, maybe elevating your planters up a little bit as well. There's so many different kinds of things, like containers and vessels you can grow food in. Um, yeah. So being a little creative, maybe, you know, that you can uh, mount some half window boxes or planters to the back of your balcony to the wall itself. Um, and maybe there'll be a, a little less in the wind at that point. So yeah. trying to see where the wind is, it's going to be obviously yeah. closest to the balcony edge. So trying to come back a little bit from that and putting in some wind breaks would be beneficial. Yeah, go out there with a pinwheel and see where it spins. Yeah, the fastest. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, so we got yeah. uh, lo location now, uh, vessel, the pot, and uh, how, how yeah. do we pick the right pots? Oh my gosh. Well, I mean, the sky's the limit. You know, you can DIY containers, you can buy containers. Um, and when you think about upcycling or using DIY type containers, I mean, you could build wooden boxes like wooden planters. Uh, you can you can take an old bucket and, and put some drainage holes in it and make that into a container. Um, you know, I as I mentioned to you earlier, I have a, a coffee bean bag. Some of the coffee shops in, in the city here, you can get the bags for free. And so I remember last year with the pandemic too, and we didn't know, I couldn't find containers because we couldn't shop for a long time, but I was able to get coffee bean bags and I planted a whole bunch of crops in those and they did amazing. So I still grow um, in my coffee bean bags. Baskets, I mean, wire, you know, containers. There's so many options for taking old items and recycling them into containers. Uh, I think there's probably a million videos on YouTube on that as well. Um, also, of course, you can buy containers plastic, fiberglass, um, the fabric ones, like I mentioned uh, as well. So there's no shortage of those types of things to use. I love terracotta and I love the look of terracotta, but it's expensive. You have to store it over the winter because it'll break if you leave it out in the garden. Plus it dries out in like, I don't know, five seconds. So I don't want to water my containers 20 times a day. So um, if you had glazed terracotta, obviously that's going to be a bit better. Or you could plant in plastic and then hide it in a terracotta pot if you really want that terracotta look. Yeah, um, right. But, you know, Generally, I would use plastic pots. I tend to use for the most part. And then I'll upcycle a bunch of items too. Um, pretty much anything that will hold some soil, you can plant in. Um, I would think about size, of course, because the bigger a container is, the more soil it's going to hold. And therefore it's gonna dry out 
you know, less quickly. So it's important, I think, to, to have as large a container as you can. Yes, you'll spend more money putting soil into it, but you'll also spend far less time watering it throughout the whole summer months. So I like to use larger containers if I can. Um, but even if you use like the, the white bucket sort of thing and you group four or five of them together, they're gonna kind of like, um, you know, they're not gonna dry out as quickly when they're all pushed together, you know, versus being totally spaced out where the heat and the sun and the wind can dry them out far faster. Um, yeah. so, you know, so, but containers, material, size, buy them, upcycle them, lots of options out there. Have you done any upcycling yourself when it comes to growing vegetables in containers? Not too much, because I only have two potted plants on the whole property. I'll, <laughs> two, I get two acres of two potted plants. Uh, right. so, so sometimes no. <laughs> we'll have three. Um, but yeah, people ask me about it a lot. And since I grow everything in the ground and it grows so well, I say, try to trick the plant. The tr the, in my, yeah. my, my theory is that if you're going to grow things well in containers, you want to trick the plant into thinking it's in the ground. Um, yeah. you know, uh, so that's, uh, I, I was, it's funny, um, you're mentioning recycling. I was, uh, I got a friend who lives in the Valley and, uh, he's got a buddy who lives on a river and, uh. I was in that guy's backyard. So it's just some guy who knows some guy. And they had, uh, you know, weed <laughs> oh, growing, yeah. growing in five gallon buckets. Yep. And these things were like sunflowers. They were huge. Uh, wow. Just all, and these were just paint buckets, you know, it said like Glidden or whatever, you know. Like, yeah, yeah. Th those make great containers. You just got to water those religiously yeah. <laughs> and fertilize them. But, you know, you can also grow food in hanging baskets. And yes. I've experimented with this a lot. My problem with it is they dry out again in like 10 seconds. So right now in my greenhouse, I do have two different tomatoes in hanging baskets as well as strawberries. The strawberries do pretty well, I gotta say, but the tomatoes, oh my gosh, you know what happens if tomatoes dry out too. Um, there's so many problems they can get. So they dry out very quickly. So, right. you know, you buy a tomato plant at your garden center, you might spend 30 bucks in a big tomato in a hanging basket, and it's going to dry out really, really quickly. So you have to pay extra attention to watering if you're going to grow in hanging baskets or even small window boxes, because, you know, you go to the garden centers and there's these tiny six inch window boxes, really narrow, maybe by two feet long. That's a really tiny amount of space. Yes. I would maybe grow alpine strawberries or lettuce in there or spinach, but I'm not going to grow big tomato plants in that tiny space. So really think about the types of plants you're going to grow and how big they're going to get and match yeah. that to the size of the pot. Well, if you're upcycling, recycling something yeah. and it, does, it doesn't have holes in it, let's say I've got like a five gallon bucket. So that's about a 12 inch diameter by about 16 inches high, give or take. Yeah. Uh, how many, like how much hole per space do you, you know, like, you know, I just keep putting holes into a toy. Yeah. <laughs> My idea is if I put water in it, the water should come out and the water the state, you know, you, you don't want it a uh, pool in the bottom, but you know, is there anything people should think about when they're punching holes through something? Can you have yeah. too much, too much holes? You can have too many or you can make them too big. Like I wouldn't be drilling one inch holes in the bottom of my containers. Um, quarter inch holes are, are great. Um, and, you know, if I had one of those, like you say, paint buckets, that's maybe a foot across, I would probably put nine or 10 holes in the bottom of that at least. Um, yes. You know, that should be enough and, and, and put them in an even, you know, kind of like spread at the bottom of the container. Uh, I mean, it only takes, what, 10 seconds to do that. It's not, it doesn't take very long but yeah. it'll certainly pay off big time um, because you wanna make sure everything drains really well. The quickest way to kill a plant is bad drainage. And in yes. containers, that is often an issue, which is another problem with choosing something like terracotta. Um, oftentimes they don't have drainage holes and you might love that pot, but it is not gonna do well for plants. Um, yes. And even if you buy a plastic pot or a window box or a planter sometimes, it doesn't have holes in the bottom. So again, yeah. add them if you can, because otherwise you're just gonna slowly be torturing and killing that plant. <laughs>